The changing eating habits of Americans has caused a huge increase in obesity rates. This is especially true for lower income groups. These families are not eating as healthy because it is actually cheaper to buy unhealthy foods than it is to buy healthy foods. For example, a single package of fresh broccoli can cost a few dollars while a fast food restaurant meal can cost just the same amount of money. Because they can only afford so much, lower income families will naturally choose the more filling if not more nutritious option. Because so much of this is going on, their obesity rates have gone up dramatically. And that's not all. One study, which compared the availability of healthy foods to unhealthy foods in different grocery stores, showed the availability of healthy foods in larger markets compared to smaller mar grocery stores was relatively the same. But it also showed that the prices for healthy foods found at larger stores were lower than those at smaller grocery stores. Because low-income communities usually have grocery stores rather than supermarkets, the obesity rates of these people have gone up drastically. But with small steps and lifestyle changes, the epidemic can be turned around. One of these steps is to have a weekly government-funded bus ride to a larger supermarket from these lower-income neighborhoods. This gives better access to the lower-priced healthy foods for lower-income families, allowing them to eat healthy for more days of the week. Weekly citywide food drives are also a very good ways to spur healthy eating in the community. These food drives would allow more fortunate members of the society to donate healthy foods to the less fortunate. This would spur those communities to prepare healthy foods more often because they would not have to buy foods anymore. The free food they would use would be the healthy food they would use. This would therefore directly affect the shift toward a healthier nation, nationwide diet by directly bringing the ones affected to, by the epidemic into the process of creating a healthier society. These ideas could shift the nationwide diet to a healthier alternative. Another cause of America's obesity problem is the eating habits of people developed from an early age. Eating habits established from an early age affect the individual for the rest of their life. One study showed that 80% of overweight kids, 10 to 15, become obese at the age of 25. Another concluded that those children who were overweight by the age of 8 had more severe obesity as adults. This shows that overweight and obese children are more likely to become obese during adulthood. Things to eat. Okay. And uh, what do you think uh, parents could be doing better to develop their uh, students' eating habits? One, one thing that would help, they could pack their lunch for one thing, because then that way they know what they're getting in their lunch. Um, however, I think we have great variety of healthy things in our cafeteria that you can choose from. Um, sitting down, taking more family time at meal time instead of rush here, rush there, this kind of thing. What can we quickly get? Can we zip by McDonald's and just pick something up? Can we quickly order a pizza? I mean, everybody is so busy right now in their lives, parents, kids, guardians, those kinds of things that people really don't always take the time to make the healthier foods and sit down and eat it slower. So couple things they could do. And just teaching kids from a young age that things are fun, you know, call call green beans, green french fries and teach a kid that those are good for you rather than the regular deep fried ones or do more baking or stir frying and things where the food's not sitting in and fats. You know, just healthy meal preparation. This portion change can also be very effective at school. School lunches are often portioned off. But nothing can stop a student from getting any amount of more food if they truly wanted it. What schools can do is put a limit to the amount of food available to students on a single day. This will have two beneficial effects. First, students will get, of course, better portions and therefore a better calorie count, resulting in less unburned calories and less fat buildup. It will also free up some of the money needed to pay for extra food. This money can then be put into providing a wider variety of foods thus providing students with more available nutrition, creating an environment of regular, healthy choices, and further instilling the good eating habits necessary for a healthy, future lifestyle. Of course, many people argue that eating can be a pleasure, and should therefore not be regulated. While the simple pleasures of life should not be denied or overregulated, it is also very important to note that everything has a limit. Take, for example, the social norm of smoking. In the, early, in the preceding decades. This was considered hip and enjoyable to many who did it at the time. Despite this, it is very reasonable to place regulation on this activity. Smoking in public can disturb and harm the surrounding people. 
and age limits have been put in place to protect younger generations from this effect. Just as these regulations have been implemented to protect people involved in these activities, so should provisions be made to protect or at least better educate the people. There comes a time when the harm outweighs the gain when eating too much unhealthy food. Thus, efforts to regulate eating are necessary once to a certain point, as regulation was necessary to other luxuries as well. What makes obesity so unique from other diseases is that its treatments are very effective and it's rarely too late to fix. From that viewpoint, obesity is seen as more of a lifestyle choice that can be reversed with positive lifestyle changes. The Center for Disease Control states that children need a minimum of one hour of exercise a day, while adults need two and a half hours a week. The benefits of regular exercise include decreased chances of getting heart disease, diabetes, certain cancers, and other obesity-related diseases. Ms. Mitchell, how bad do you think obesity is in America? In America, I think I think it's at an all-time high that we're seeing. They're even saying that um, people this generation right now are not going to even live as long as their parents have, and then that's the first time that they've ever said that. Usually, you know, the age is increasing, increasing, and increasing. And regarding exercise, specifically exercise, what do you think the Oakmas schools, like say OHS, could do to further? Um, combat the problem? We used to have more intramural programs than what we we have nowadays. Um, part of that problem though is gym time and space and when can you do that with all the different sports that are going on. Um, I think that would be something that would be kind of neat. Maybe getting some more maybe even clubs or activities available for students to do. Let students know when the weight room is open and who's supervising it and that everybody in the school can use that. You know, that it's not just for sports teams. Um, maybe we could have people come in and teach some other kind of classes, some Zumba or something like that, if people would be interested in it. Um, I think we have a good showing of kids taking team sports and personal conditioning and, and lifeguarding and those kinds of activities during the school day. But we could always see more people thinking that physical fitness is important in their daily life and getting involved in that. Okay, and what would you say to someone who, who's thinking of cutting down sports programs to improve education in the school? Cutting down sports programs or cutting it out of the daily school day? Um, just sports in general, like any sports exercise programs? Sports and any exercise like programs? I, you know, I, I think that's a really bad thing to do. I mean, if you're involved and you love running, you got to fit it into your day. you got to fit exercise in there. 60 minutes a day, get up and play. We aren't even seeing younger kids out. I don't know how many times you've gone through neighborhoods and things. It's a gorgeous day on a summer day or whatever, not too hot, not too cold. You don't see anybody outside even playing. So they're not even doing those kinds of things. Academics are super, super important, but there's also tons of studies out there now that show the better um, physically fit you are, the actually, the higher your test scores are. And they're really seeing that, especially in females, um, with math and science scores. So it actually will help you to study. It's going to relieve the stress from all the APs because it's going to release those endorphins that are now going to make you feel better. So I think if you can throw it in there and just get that, you know, 30 to 60 minutes a day, you can still take all of the higher level classes and things and actually end up doing better. Okay, thank you for your time, Mrs. Mitchell. Mm -hmm. However, not everyone is able to simply join an exercise club and begin losing weight. Lower socioeconomic classes are disproportionately obese and also have trouble paying for gym memberships. Access to facilities is crucial in getting employees and economically disadvantaged groups to start exercise routines. In the Ogumus community, Court 1 is a great center for people to work out. Its managers can help lower the obesity rate by offering gym discounts to those struggling financially. A study by American Dr. Sam Glucksberg has shown that financial incentives can increase motivation for tasks. However, this only works if the sum is small and if the task requires little creativity. Running on a treadmill fits this category very well, so this is something that employers can consider if they have the capital to set up the workplace exercise center. Since exercise leads to lower obesity rates, many of the associated diseases also tend to decline in severity. A study by Steelcase Corporation showed that medical costs for employees on an exercise program 
were 55% lower than costs for those not involved in a program. The amount of money that companies could potentially save is far greater than what's required to set up workplace fitness equipment. Offices can also add furniture that brings about exercise just by using it, like with a therapy ball or a desk mounted on a treadmill. A 2008 New York study showed that sitting on an exercise ball while on the job can burn about 30 more calories daily than when sitting on a chair. Employers on a budget can also opt to give their employees local gym discounts without needing to spend large sums of money. What many studies have showed is that the earlier people begin exercising, the lower their chances of getting obese later in life. The habits people set for themselves generally tend to carry on for most of their lives. Sadly, many obese children tend to grow into obese adults with many medical problems. Sports are a great venue for students to get exercise, but many sports only take in the best performing athletes, leaving out the others. Our schools can actively help reduce the childhood obesity rate by making sports no cut so that everyone can gain the benefits. Schools may also choose to make full education classes required for all grade levels in their districts. Several studies have shown that regular exercise in the teenage years generally lead to continued exercise later in life. This is a great way to prevent obesity from continuing its spread. That is not to say you can only overcome obesity early on. For most people, they can choose to lose their obese status at nearly any point in their lives, even in their old age. All of these healthy exercise habits are especially helpful when initiated at a younger age and will lower the obesity rate over time. There are some that are skeptical about the impact exercise has on obesity, believing that it has a negligible effect and that it is unrealistic for most people to accommodate it in their daily lives. This statement is heavily disproved by the numerous works of literature that show the contrary. The temporal problem for many people can be resolved by breaking up the routine into several shorter workouts. One study found that the benefits of long workouts were about the same as the benefits from several shorter workouts. While it's true that dieting leads to quicker weight loss, studies have shown that exercise and diet combined were the most effective in weight loss. Studies have also shown that exercise helps maintain weight loss over time and an active lifestyle. Many crash dieters regain their weight within months of concluding their diets. Since the most important factor in lowering obesity rates is having people maintain healthy habits, exercise is crucial in this regard. The informal definition of obesity is taking in more calories than you burn. Exercise is a great way for people to burn calories. Riding big waves is 